Hello. Uh, do you have issue with your Bermuda grass really doing well uh, after planting rye seed over the years? That's what this video is about. I have a guest, Ryan Kibner, with Custom Weed and Pest Control, here to talk about the struggles and the threats really with that issue. Uh, Ryan? Um, yeah. yeah. One of the biggest challenges we have in this market is uh, people want green grass in the, in the summertime, I'm sorry, in the wintertime, so they put in the winter lawn, and that actually hurts the Bermuda grass. So ideally, um, every few years, maybe give your grass a little bit of a break. You know, let it kind of recover from that extra pressure of all that seed that goes down and all the extra water and all the, all the energy you put into that rye grass. Just give it a break maybe every four or five years um, and then just let that Bermuda grass recover. So explain, like, uh, the real threat there, like what's what's the issue? What what's so bad? Uh, what's occurring with the Bermuda grass that's making it struggle by planting the rye seed? If you can summarize it, I think one of the one of the challenges that some of the old practices of really scalping the lawn to really low and just crushing the crowns of the Bermuda grass. When they do, when you do that, it just really takes that grass a long time to recover. And what's uh, explain exactly what the crown is? So on the crown is at the, at just the, above the, the soil profile. You're going to see like a little bit of a plant, which is the main structure of Bermuda grass, not just the, the sheets that come up. And because traditionally landscapers like myself, we you know we want to scalp to clear the soil in order to get the seed to touch the soil. And if you're not scalping deep enough, you don't always reach the soil. So what you're saying is that is a conflict at times if we're scalping it too short and harming that crown. You ideally want to preserve that crown as much as possible. Gotcha, gotcha. So why don't you explain some of uh, like uh, like um, kind of the mindset of you know we've got these rye seeds that are that are lasting longer mm -hmm. in in going into the springtime and what that does to the Bermuda grass and um, how that you know just doesn't give the lifespan of the Bermuda grass that you need. So the new rye grass cultivars they'll tend to last. They're really designed to really tolerate more heat. Mm -hmm. um, but no matter what you do, come July, August, the soil temperatures here just the, the rye grass will just crook out no matter what you do to it. Yeah. So. You really want to get rid of that early on, so around May 1, plus or minus, depending on the temperature, start phasing that out and try and get rid of that grass during May as much as possible so you get that Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass will use 100, 100 days of growing. So if you if you let that grass, rye grass, grow all the way until the middle of summer, and then you only have like maybe 75 days before you overseed again too, you're shortening that, that growth span so the Bermuda is really going to not yeah bigger, bigger so you kind of explain like skipping a rye mm -hmm. lawn maybe occasionally it probably wouldn't be harmful it'd actually be a lot helpful to the bermuda grass mm -hmm. like what do you suggest like well, once every four years once, once every, every other year four or five years is, is good really yeah, good absolutely. yeah helping it mm -hmm. yeah just it's, to give it a break yeah and we run into that a lot like even in my personal residence we're dealing with uh areas of lawn that just like you know, I, I'm a landscaper. It's just so odd to me that even my full sun areas where the rye dies first, we should have really strong Bermuda. And it just, you know, we're having struggles with that. Um, why don't you explain some of these other threats that um, you guys at Custom Weed and Pest kind of diagnose? Okay, so we've identified out. certain things that really hurt. We have clients that request our service a lot for consultation. So um, we come out to their house and assess to see what's going on with their grass. Why is it struggling? So middle of summer, July, almost every year, you'll have the green grasses. It's really not looking that great. Mm -hmm. And why is that? So we can really dive into figuring out what the problem is. One of the problems is overseeding. You know, the extra seed load from the seed, competition for water, nutrition. Mm -hmm. Over time, that just hurts the Bermuda grass. Another thing that happens if you don't clean that Bermuda grass out in time, as that rye grass starts to decay out, it actually puts these uh, toxic chemicals and actually hurts the, the roots of the of Bermuda grass too. So over time, it, it has a detrimental effect on the grass. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. And you guys like it so. If, so let's say I'm just a you know regular client and just want to you know really want to understand it more in depth instead of just adding more seed or finding you know adding fertilizer. If I actually want a real diagnosis of what's going on in my property, somebody could contact your guys. Yeah, absolutely. And get so it. it's not always a question of throwing more water and more fertilizer in there too. So yeah. maybe you've got coverage issues on your sprinklers you might want to address too, and that's obviously what yep. you guys do. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Um, and then bugs, grubs, and pearl scare are pretty common in this marketplace. Yeah, and in I mean let's be honest, I mean. Grass isn't native to Phoenix, right? I mean, you don't know, you don't see it on the side of the highways. So it's it's you know people. A lot of clients uh, they they love the golf course look, you know, but they don't realize that the golf course look usually requires daily daily activity monitoring. It's and, a lot of effort to really. I mean, even trees too. Trees and grass are not really designed. They're not from here. So calverdes yeah. do well here. Ironwoods do well. Creosotes. Yeah. Those are natives. They do great. You don't have to put a bunch of water on yep. them. These other things you really have to work extra hard to really get them to to survive. In this. Sure. 
crazy toxic environment. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like I tell people, it's like the moon, <laughs> like right. the surface of the moon. I mean, it's especially this year when it's been so, so hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, native species are best, but you know, people come from different parts of the world, our world, yeah, different parts of the world. A lot of times they're different parts of the country. They just want their native plants. And, you know, we have enough sunlight that, thank goodness, a lot of them do grow, maybe not necessarily. Not necessarily as well as they would in a humid climate, but um, so the real takeaways here: just you know, maybe skip Bermuda, uh, skip rye seeding, maybe every four or five years. Um, you know, if you are gonna you know overseed, make sure you're not scalping too low and harming those crowns of the Bermuda Bermuda grass. And then, really, if you can get the transition um, over with sooner, is there is there a product you can put down that really? Uh, mitigates the growth of the rye seed to allow the Bermuda to come uh, the following Mostly year. Phase out. Yeah, so yeah. golf courses use a product called Sapphire quite a bit. Uh -huh. So there's are some products out there that kind of help you phase out products chemically. To yep. to yeah. Them. Yeah, they do it for Bermuda as well because I know a lot of times they want to inhibit Bermuda growth and get the rye seed sooner. Yeah, so as a service, we provide a lot of clients that they want to basically shut down the Bermuda grass. So what happens when you do overseed? You, you shut down the water. You drop your seed, your starter fertilizer, first thing that pops up, might said Bermuda grass, and now that's gotta compete with that ryegrass. Yes. So you can put a product down called uh, Turf on Ester, and it'll actually carry a, by about two to three more weeks, and yep. so by the time that ryegrass is up, it's gonna help hopefully outcompete that ryegrass. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, no, I know a lot of that, they do that a lot of times in golf courses, but if somebody wants like a, a party at their home in mid-October, they want the rice seed down early, but they don't want it competing with the Bermuda grass. There's great options, but it's nice to hear that there's other products that go the other way for the rye grass to be mitigated out yeah, so absolutely. that the Bermuda, you know, can, can take hold again, so. I mean, the real takeaway, I think, is you want to give Bermuda grass 100 days to grow. So if you're, if you're, if you're letting the rye grass go until middle of summer, and you're cutting it out, and then you're overseeding September, October, you're just not giving the chance of the Bermuda really to thrive. Right. Healthy, yes, yes. Because as you know, the grass looks the best in September, right? Yes. So right when the grass <laughs> looks its best, you decide to shut it down. Yes, it's, well, normally it's really humid in, in August, right? And right. it's already starting to look really good, but yeah, exactly, it's, it's funny how you know, the challenges we have, obviously, it's much different than other parts of the country. Um, so, uh, you know, tell, tell us how we can get a hold of you if somebody wanted to reach out and get a consultation for, for you guys. Sure, you can call our office at 602-956-3844, uh, um, or you can email us at info at wekillweeds.com, uh, I-N-F-O at wekillweeds.com. Yeah, and your web the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah your, uh, you're, you guys are all over the internet, and you can't, type in weed control without you guys popping up. So uh, it's a great, you guys do, you offer basically pre-emergent to prevent weeds on granite. What other services, why don't you tell us the sure, services? Our businesses we control in both grass and granite. Um, we do pest control, general pest control on commercial and residential. And then we do a lot of tree care. So we don't do removing or clipping or cutting. We do more of just fixing problems, uh, distressed trees. You know, this year has been a real challenge for trees. So we've got some solutions to really help trees kind of recover and, and get through this toxic time. I feel like that's a kind of differentiates you from a lot of the other uh, weed and pest control companies is you actually have a lot of proactive options, uh, you know, things to help, you know, not just like get rid of this, get rid of that, but really like help your trees, help your plants, help your lawns. You, you actually help me at my lawn at, at my personal residence. So. Um, but it, it's good to know that there's resources of people that, you know, real professionals that know the right solutions to really get the best out of their plant material. So, so for me, I've spent years killing stuff, bugs and weeds. <laughs> and so now this is like a, for us, you know, you look at the, the fires, the hurricanes, all the loss of, of trees in the world last couple of years. I mean, we really need kind of almost a Manhattan project to build plant trees and just optimize their health so we can you know, suck out CO2 out of the atmosphere and everything like that too, so. Yeah, we definitely got some more content we gotta get out of you maybe yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on and doing this with me. Um, just wanted to get uh, the content out there and just share uh, your experiences and get you know people to understand what you guys offer because you have such a, a great um, company that can be very helpful to a lot of people. So thanks so much.